Thank you, Matt, on Bangladesh. Bangladesh is free at the cost of hundreds of lives under the shoot on site ordered by autocratic Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. But the situation is still unclear. Students, leaders, opposition parties, and the army are trying to form a civilian government. Could you please provide more insight into the U.S. position? Uh, so, as I said, a few things. Number one, um, our condolences, of course, go out to those who have been hurt uh, in the violence uh, over the past few weeks. Um, we are focused now on supporting an end to the violence uh, and for accountability. Um, all decisions regarding the interim government uh, should be made with respect to democratic principles, rule of law, and the will of the Bangladeshi people. Yeah, as you said, accountability. Sheikh Hasina fled to India, and she is trying to get any of the Western country. Will you allow her to come into the U.S. as she commit uh, crime not, against humanist, humanity I, I, largely? I'm not aware of any request uh, of that uh, nature. Please. Matt, yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, guys, yeah, one at a time. Uh, Matt, uh, the recent poll, uh, we already know, uh, Bangladesh government uh, led to widespread violence and uh, chaos. What measure is the U.S. State Department or U.S. taking to address the reported atrocities against minorities and general populace? In uh, Bangladesh. So a few things. Number one, uh, I have made, as I made clear, what we are calling for today is an end to the violence and for accountability. Now. As to what accountability looks like, that's something that should take place uh, under Bangladeshi law. Obviously, anyone responsible for uh, acts of violence, uh, acts that break the law, should be held accountable for them. Thank you so much. Uh, Matt, Matt. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Matt, thanks. Uh, during the time that Bangladeshi people, people struggle to... against uh, that fascist ruler, and uh, thousands of people got killed, uh, you already informed us that she fled the country uh, this morning. I didn't inform you that, I think. Okay, uh, you, you said it, okay. Said she, uh, I said we've seen the announcement she resigned. Okay, yeah. uh, she resigned, okay. Uh, after she left, there is a dozens of dead bodies are pulling out from the Gono Vobon, the official residence of Prime Minister. There's a dozens of dead bodies are pulling out next to the parliament. There's a lots of atrocities are taking place by the government official, those who are still in power, especially a couple of people. Uh, Army Chief of Staff General Wakaru Zaman, he was involved uh, with genocide. Um, Navy Chief Admiral Mohammed Nazmul Hassan, he was involved with the genocide. Air Chief Marshal Hassan Mahmoud Khan, they were involved with the genocide. And they're the same people are saying, we are going to the president and form a caretaker government. So as a matter of fact, when was the last time we heard a killer is going to do the justice for another killer? So let me say a few things. Number one, with respect to um, the violence over the past few weeks and the deaths that have occurred, it is vital that we have full and transparent investigations to ensure accountability for these deaths. Um, sec sec second, as it relates to the interim government, as I made clear in my opening remarks, we think that is important that um, uh, we focus on the Bangladeshi people's democratic aspirations and see um, uh, a path to democratic governance. Uh, does America support Bangladesh military to install a caretaker government? Uh, we want to see the Bangladeshi people decide the future of the Bangladeshi government. Thank uh, you. Jenny. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, just uh, have there been any, has there been been any contact, contact as far as you know with Bangladeshi officials, uh, be it in the military or in the the, the former government or? Uh, I don't have any to report today. There may have been contacts from our embassy, but I'm not aware of any, don't have any to announce. Um, and, and just also in terms of uh, some US issues with Bangladesh, the issue of the Rohingya, of course, has been something that's, that's been quite important between the US and Bangladesh. Do you, do you is there any concern that this would impact the, the, the housing of the Rohingya refugees? Um, so I think, as you know, the United States has provided going to try to do the number from uh, memory here. I think it's around $2 billion to assist with um, uh, refugees in Bangladesh. And um, I don't have any immediate comment on how this change of government might affect those programs. I would certainly hope that it wouldn't. Um, uh, we think it's important that um, uh, Bangladesh continue to provide hospitality um, to those refugees and will continue to uh, work with them to do so. And no, hold on, hold, guys, hold on. Uh, Simon, did you have? Yeah. Uh, well, Matt, uh, uh, Sean asked most of my questions, but I did want to ask on: uh, is there is there ongoing uh, assistance to Bangladesh, both uh, 
in terms of humanitarian aid that will con will continue and also um, you know military will military assistance continue given I guess there's, this is not a coup, but there's questions over the, the transfer of power. Yeah, so certainly with re with respect to the kind of, uh, 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 you know, um, allusion in the last part of your question. So we've seen all, all that we know right now is we've seen the announcement from the government that she resigned. We don't have any further uh, information about how that resignation may, may have taken place. With respect to, and that goes to the, the question, uh, obviously, of financial support. So with respect to financial support in uh, fiscal year 2023, the United States provided over $212 million in bilateral economic development and health assistance to Bangladesh. Obviously, this, uh, I don't have any announcements with respect to those programs other than that we would like to see them continue because they're important um, to uh, our relationship with the people of Bangladesh. And just to confirm my, the, the question Sean answered, it was um, we provided nearly two, bil nearly two billion humanitarian assistance to support Rohingya refugees since August of uh, 2017. Can I just uh, take uh, just, just another uh, question on that? Uh, just taking a step back a little bit. I mean, how do you actually feel about the Army's role? Uh, how does the United States feel? Do you think that they were productive in this? Is there any concern that an interim role could become more than an interim role? Well? Um, so let me answer that two ways. One, with respect to their role over the past several days, we have seen the reports that the army resisted calls to uh, crack down on the protesters. And if those reports are true, certainly that is something that we would encourage. We don't, um, we made clear, I think for several weeks now that um, people have a legitimate right to protest and to peacefully assemble. And we opposed any kind of violent crackdown. So if it is true, in fact, that the army resisted calls um, to crack down on, um, uh, on lawful protesters, that would be a positive development. With respect to, to where we go from here, um, what we want to see is democratic order. We want to see the Bangladeshi people choose their uh, own government, and that's what we'll be, we'll be looking for in the days and weeks ahead.